So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 28. Today is December 1st, 2022. Well, this is uh, last month um, of 2022. <laughs> I honestly can say that this year just flew by. Um, and um, let's see, the topic for this podcast is a continuation from from last week. I, I know I mentioned last week that um, I'm actually setting the, the stage for talking about how to renegotiate any contracts. So by contracts, I mean um, not really, um, you know, those contracts that's that's written is legal I'm not talking about that it's just relationship contracts or it could be experience contracts so by contracts I also mean agreements because um contracts is kind of as far as I know there are no contracts meaning that there's nothing that is cast in stone that you cannot change, that you cannot shift. Um, everything can be renegotiated. Everything can be shifted. Yeah, um, even you know how how long you're gonna live or whether you want to die right away. So all those things are up for negotiation. What you want to experience while you are here in this reality is all up for. Um, renegotiation the 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 trick is how do you renegotiate it how do you change um because a lot of the times the 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 contracts or agreements a lot of the agreements was done before we um incarnated on this playground we at a soul level think of things that we wanted to experience while we are here and once we are here, um, the situation is very different. And so we, and also now that the whole playground has has shifted energetically, and I think we can all sense that something is afoot, and that and that something has shifted. Even the most unaware person in the world, even the animals, know that something has shifted. And um, and because the the world that we when we incarnated um, to to this playground to the world it is now it is very different. So we can um, we we have actually a lot of of um, reasons or um, to renegotiate the reasons why we're here and what are the experiences that we are actually in for. So how do we do that? And so um, that's why the, the last week before I introduce how to renegotiate, it's, it is, I want to talk about power because when you know who you are and you realize how powerful you actually are, that you are the creator of your own experience, your creator, of your own reality, when you truly embody that, then renegotiating what you want to experience is easy, simple. But if you don't know that you are powerful, if you don't own your own power, then um, you have no leg to stand on when you want to choose your own experience because you don't have the power to choose. You're not powerful enough to choose, and and you and as as long as you believe that you don't have the power, then you will experience what it is that you actually believe in. So that's why last week I talked really about power and how to own and embody your own power. And so this week I'm actually going to talk more about the the mechanics of renegotiating your own experience. So that's the kind of the, the preamble of the rest of this podcast. <clears throat> and the format is as um, before is, we're gonna have a presence meditation and then I'll go talk, 
about what it is that I'm going to talk about. So any any questions, comments before I go into the presence meditation? Okay. In that case, let's just do the presence meditation. And um, just wanted to maybe, I know we've been doing presence meditations for 28 weeks now, and, and I actually just want to to comment on how come I want to do a presence meditation. Um, there actually, I actually have a few agenda to do that, or a few things that they actually want. One is, the first thing is presence meditation is really to, from whatever it is that you've been doing, it's like a, a brick, it's, it's a brick. And also a recalibration is whatever it is that you have been busy with and attention um, for the, the, the first part of your day is right now I want all of your attention to be back to yourself so that you can hear this and, and digest this as, as best as you can. Or, and and the other thing is also um, the presence meditation because I have I usually have a um, a main uh, a final meditation. However, when I do more than one meditation, the first meditation it may take you five minutes in order to get into a uh, in order to shift your state, but but the more frequency of meditation, the easier it is for you to get into the meditative state. That's why I at least do two meditations during each podcast so that this meditation is actually priming all of you for the final meditation. So the cat is out of the bag now. Let's do the presence meditation. So just take a deep breath in and let it all go. And take another deep breath in. And this time, just make sure you take your time to fully inflate your lungs, your body as much air as you can breathe in. And when you can breathe in no more and slowly let it go. And then one more deep breath in. And slowly let go. And as you let go, also let go of any tension, anything that does not serve you in this moment. Let it all go. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is comfortable for you. And each time you breathe in, imagine that you're breathing in infinite possibilities and as you breathe out imagine that you are letting go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment and just do this for a few more breaths And after a few more breaths, or whenever it is, you are feeling your body becoming more relaxed. And shift your intention to call back your energy, call back your attention. Whatever it is that you have given and sent out your attention out to in this moment, call 
your attention back to yourself. All the energies that you have expanded to different areas in your life, your home, your career, your family, whomever, wherever. Call all of those energies back to yourself. Be very, very selfish in this moment. Call all of your attention, intention, energy back to you. Call them all back and just feel those energies coming back to you. And notice the difference when you do that. And whatever you feel, it's perfectly okay. And when you really feel that you're more solid within yourself, that you are becoming more stable within yourself. And when you feel that, then come all the way back into the room and open your eyes if you had closed them before. So welcome back. And now let's just take a moment to, um, I just want to share what I, the, um, what it is that I'm going to talk about. So we're here now, I'm starting to talk about um, contracts or agreements. And then also um, talking about conscious creations. And this is all in we this is all in relationship to sacral chakra. Why sacral chakra? Because the sacral chakra is really how we share our energy with others. So it's about relationship. So the sacral chakra is a lot about um, relationship with others and also of course the relationship with ourselves and it is also about creation and our ability to be a creator so this is all in relation to that and I know we have talked about you know the, the sacral chakra before so this time I'm not going to even read over those so now I just want to um, start to talk a little bit about relationship. So why relationship? Um, I'm talking about our experience. So um, okay, when I say, how do we renegotiate our agreements or contracts? It does not necessarily have to be in relationship. It could be our, um, it could be anything, any of our experience. If we are not in line or if we are not aligned to have that experience anymore, then we can always change it. So what I say um, about relationship, I'm just what I'm trying to say is that I'm using relationship and how to renegotiate relationship agreements or contracts just as, as a sample, an example, because um, whatever it is, the method that we use to renegotiate agreements between the relationship that we want to experience or we want to have in our life, it actually applies to any other experience. It could be our life. It could be our career. It does not necessarily 
have to be about relationship with another person. So that's what I want to point out. But I'm using relationship as a an example of experiences that we can actually start to shift or change and how we can do that. So so does that mean like an it can be a relationship with another person or a relationship with another thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So okay. it could be a relationship with money, for example. Okay. Could yep. be a relationship with the government. So whatever it is, does not necessarily have to be. Because um the 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 I would say that the most important the 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 bottom line is really relationship with ourselves because if I, if I really get to on a very high level there is no one else but ourselves in the universe everything else everyone else is simply some it's is Okay, my understanding is that there is no one else out, out there except myself. So each one of you is really another version of me. Only you have a slightly different, um, sometimes maybe even more than a slightly different, maybe a lot different experience and point of view from me. However, each and every one of you out there is just another instance of the um, the oneness that we actually all share. So my experience of one of you, any one of you, is really around my relationship with myself as well. So if I am, am let's say, if my mother triggered me, it's not because there's someone else out there that is called my mother that is triggering me. It's because within myself, there is a, as um, I don't like myself in certain ways. And so instead of actually getting, uh, um, instead of actually accepting myself and loving myself, I just projected that onto my mother or whomever it is that is um, close enough to me to to be able to play that role. So that's really what it is. And it it's not really about, um, it's, it may not be another person. It could be a an, any experience. It could be a thing. So anytime that I am, I have something that I, an, an experience that I don't like, that I struggle with, it is just because I'm struggling with a part of myself or an aspect of myself or um, an, a thought form that I have adopted. I'm just struggling with that. It's just that um, when we are in 3D, we translate that struggle to another object or another person. However, energetically, I'm just struggling against myself. So that's, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's my understanding of it. So um, let me get back. What was I trying to say? <laughs> I'm off topic now. Actually, let me actually just go back to the, oh, okay. I, now I, I, I know what it is that I actually want to <clears throat> talk about. So, um, yes, relationship. So, I. So this is kind of a. Um, I just took this as an example. This is a marriage vow. So you know, um, two people are trying to get married and so they have some they they say some vows to each other 
And um, this is a rather traditional one. And I know there are many that are more um, up to date and more current ones, but I just want to take one of these because I know um, you are probably most familiar with this version, the traditional version. And it's a lot, it's a lot of, you know, uh, promising vows. So this is actually a, a form of verbal contract, right? Like, like when, when we go into a, a relationship, there are things that we agree to. There are things that we agree to consciously. So we consciously made a vow or we, we have uh, some legal document. Okay, so that's so that's what we whenever we're in relationship to another person, another thing doesn't matter. There are things that we consciously know that we have agreed to. We consciously know that we agree to these things. However, with everything that we consciously agree to, there there is also a lot of things that we unconsciously agree to as well. Um, given so so for example, we con let's say two person um, met, fell in love, and they they agreed to marry and start a family together and all that. So the what's the, the the conscious agreement? Conscious agreement is let's say all those things that we we've said to in the the, the vows. But what's unconscious is, is that, well, you know what? Um, we don't just agree to marry that person. We also unconsciously agree to um, somehow be under the influence of that lineage as well. So not just that person, we're not just marrying a person. We actually marrying the that person's um, parents, extended families, uh, and it could be, and um, it could be something that, let's say, when we marry somebody, we didn't know that you know, five years down the road or ten years down the road, they may develop and have a an incurable disease. That's like some something like a very rare form of cancer that that they're not going to recover from we didn't nobody consciously know that these are the things so that's what i'm trying to say is that whenever we go into a relationship there are things that we consciously know and there are things that we unconsciously know but whether it is we consciously or unconsciously we still know energetically we know maybe our mind does not pick up that oh that person's family has a background of this rare illness that they're gonna die in another five years time or they may if not an illness then it could be that you know five years down the road they are supposed to have an an accident and they're gonna um, transition to another plane of existence because of that these are things that on a conscious level, we don't know. But on the unconscious level, we do know. And I, I emphasize that we actually know unconsciously because um, that's we actually know a lot more than we think we know. So... And... So how do we actually um, renegotiate once we know the things that we unconsciously know now and we change our mind? Maybe we change our mind. Okay, well, if, if I have to go through all of that, then that's it. I'm out. I don't want <clears throat> to have that kind of relationship. That's not what I signed up for. Could be that. I um it could be that 
um, you've had enough of that kind of relationship and you're done with it and you get to the point where, you know what? I've had enough of that kind of relationship. Let's start to change it, to consciously change it. The changing and renegotiating <clears throat> of your own experience is actually very simple. I'm gonna let's let's start with that first. How do we actually renegotiate any experience? Ex could be relationship, could be anything. But if there's an experience that you don't want anymore, that you've you've done with, then all you have to do is acknowledge one thing, and that is that um, you have all experience, all no matter what experience, no matter if, whether it is experience that you absolutely love or experience that you absolutely will not choose to have. But any experience, if you're experiencing it, then you, on some level, or I should say a part of you, agreed to have that experience. And now not the whole of you, but a part of you wanted to have that experience. And usually it is the part of us that we somehow have um, resistance to because I don't want to have this bad experience. Who wants to be victimized to or who wants to be a victim? No one would consciously choose to be a victim. Um, however, unconsciously, we signed up to be the victim um, because of something in our belief system that keeps drawing us that needing to experience the have the experience of being a victim until we get to the point where we saturate it. And we finally realize, oh, okay, I am attracted to the people that wanted to victimize me. So, so what do I do? So you integrate that part of you that needed and wanted to have the, the experience of being a victim whatever experience it is that you don't want to have. So really get that a part of you wanted to have that experience. That's how any experience is possible is because a, a part of you wanted has or said yes, have agreed to that experience. Once you acknowledge that a part of you somehow wanted and needed that experience. The next thing is you integrate that part of you back in to your life. How do you do that? You get to neutral. If so, don't resist. Whatever it is that you resist will stick around. Whatever experience, if you resist that experience and you resist the part of you that wanted or needed to have that experience, then that's ex you can't renegotiate because you're not in you're not in the full power and presence of yourself. It is only when you have integrated the part of you that needed that experience back into yourself, you then you become whole. And when you become whole, then you can now be the creator of what it is that you want next. So in theory, that's that's all that is. That's as simple as it is. Is you acknowledge that a part of you needed or agreed to the experience. And then you integrate that part of yourself back in. Once you've integrated that, then you are the creator and you can create a different experience. So um, questions, comments so far?
You all know exactly what I'm talking about. You know how to do it now? <clears throat> it's a it's a little bit integrating is a little bit um sort of confusing and i'm thinking it, oh wait a minute <laughs> is this a process that will take a little while because in order to be able to um experience it then you have the acknowledge part of acknowledging and experiencing it might take a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Integration. Okay. So I would give you an ex example of um, what I mean by integration. <clears throat> so you guys know about my. Uh, my relationship with my mom, right? You guys have heard about it. We have such loving experience. And I, like I've done a lot of um, integration and done a lot of um, shifting my own energy, shifting my own understanding and trying to understand it from her point of view rather than from my own point of view. However, there is, still this one point that I was not able to concede for a long time until very recently and that was that um like I'm I'm one of the the people who 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 is into these um I would say self-help and 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 con trying to make myself more conscious shifting my own consciousness and um, so my, what I'm holding out for is that, I, you know, why my, my, my pet peeve is that, how come I have to do all these things? How come <laughs> my mother, my mother never does any of these things. She is who she is, unapologetic. <laughs> she is who she is. And how come... And she's making my life miserable. So how come I am the one that has to like do all of the shifting? So that's that's so a part of me just does not want to let go. It's like, okay, I'm hanging on to this because I just think that it's not um that I I don't I feel somehow that it's not right that I'm the only one that is doing the shifting. And she's just having it easy. Like she gets to 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 see the 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 loving, beautiful me, and I on the back end has to do so much work on myself just to be that loving person. So that's why um even though our relationships has transformed a lot, but there's still just this one tiny bit. And I really very, very recently was able to get to the point where, oh, I I actually, I, I understand. I accept her for who she is because I wanted her to change in order for me to, uh, to justify that I change. So, so that was, that was it. So when I finally got that, oh, I don't have to change her. I don't need her to change. There's nothing I need from her. I don't need for her to be anything that within myself that I'm and whole already. I don't need for her to agree with me. I don't need for her to support me. I got into the point where I accepted myself as like as who I am, what's and all. That and that's when I was able to also accept her, what's and all, as who she is, without needing for her to change. And so that um, took us, took our relationship to another level. Now, is that the end level? I don't know. <laughs> I just know that it is the next level for our relationship at this point. Maybe there is another level. I don't know. And when that next level show up then I don't know but so 
that's really what um, the point I want to talk about is integration is that it may take you 10 years or maybe 10 minutes to integrate, but, but you have, but it has to be authentic. You can't just fake it because, okay, I want this to shift so much that I'm going to just fake it. It's not something that you can fake. You have to really feel that, okay, yeah, I, I really have it all integrated. It has to be genuine integration. Genuine to the point where you, um, you're neutral because you're either neutral or you're not. There is no, there's no faking neutral. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, it does. So that's what I mean by it's very simple, but that does not mean it's easy. Because it, even though I knew that I have to get to neutral, but for the life of me, I could not get to neutral until I'm ready to get neutral. And how long is that going to take? Who knows? Nobody knows. It may take you five minutes. It may take you five years or five lifetimes. It's you are the one that um, decide. And or, or or maybe you don't you don't stay with this relationship. Maybe you the relationship dissolves. Yep. That, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing is <laughs> the relationship may dissolve but if it's something that your soul wants you to work on every <laughs> relationship will have that <laughs> every relationship will have that it will be in your face until you are ready to look at it and integrate it that's why um some people they they get together they they you know they went the separate ways and the next time they have another relationship it's it's like having the same relationship only with a series of different people that's that then you know that oh okay it's because it's something that you it's within you. You have to face that. You have to integrate that and drop it. And then you will start to be able to have really a different kind of relationship, which you may or may not prefer better. So mm. any other comments, questions? Yes, that's what happened in my relationship. Every time I got new person, it's like different person, but the same relationship. Something happens the same and the same and the same. And my sister used to say, oh, you just attract such a people. It's just true. I probably did. Yeah. That's because a part of you wanted that kind of relationship. So yeah, part of you wanted that kind of relationship. So you have to get to understand yourself, really observe yourself. What part of you is the part that actually wanted that interaction? Somehow is attracting that interaction. And, <clears throat> and the most difficult part is you integrate that back. You love that part of yourself. And loving the part of ourselves that we resist, that's, that's, that's the not easy part. Is, is it possible that as you, when you've integrated a, sort of a bigger life lesson, then your vibration will go up and you'll no longer be attracted or attract that same type of person again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 
Because you have in when you have integrated that, like once you um it's it's kind of like you got to a different playground and that option is no longer available because it's a totally different playground. We can sure see this with the with the with COVID. The difference in vibration and how that how that repels. Mm -hmm. and it's a <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. COVID was just the beginning of uh, dictatorship in any uh, in other areas. They just set us up to be <laughs> obedient. I think I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, yes, that's and set us up for years. Yeah, they've actually been chipping at, at us for a long time now. They just, um, it just actually got to be more noticeable. <laughs> but what do you mean more noticeable? Um, <laughs> you notice, you notice it more. You notice that it's a, it is, um, it's just a power grab. Just a power grab, yeah. People are asleep. They don't respond and media misleads. Mm -hmm. So they don't know. Yep. Um, actually, I want to show something um yeah that's why it's it's about power then that's why i last week i talked about power um actually unless we give in to our fear no one can take our power away like yeah they, they're trying to push that but it actually is um, just one of us even just one of us like if I stand up like I stand up and say no I'm not I'm not um, afraid just one person stand up. It's already not possible to take my power away. It's because I, like one person is that powerful. It used to be that uh, we have to be in groups. It used to be that um, we need to have a group of people in order to tip the scale but now it's actually no each just one person each person you agree within yourself that what is your what experience are you um okay with and what experience are you not okay with and the ones that you want to let go of all you have to do is just integrate the part of yourself that still needed that experience once you've integrated that that experience um, cannot be pushed on you anymore. I'm just going to say one experience, just based on that, what you just said. Is this recorded? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, then I'll just stay away. <laughs> okay. I'll say it next time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, when you have a questions, how how do you integrate the that part in in yourself that you want to to change or you want to uh, move on? Um, consciousness, awareness. So, just observe. 
um, observe what it is that, what do you get out of that experience? We always get something from the experience. Whatever experience it is, we always get something. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, for example, um, uh, um, um, I'm just just going back to my experience, what I talked about with my um, with my mother. I knew that it was because I don't think that this like um I believe that you have to work on yourself. If you don't work on yourself, then you're less than. So because my mother does not work on herself, so she's less than. So how come I have to do all of this and she doesn't have to do anything. <clears throat> and so, and I knew that. I knew that that's the only thing that is, um, that is still in between us. I have known that for a long time. But can I integrate it? You think I can? <laughs> no. I absolutely believe that it is that is the right thing and 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 I know that that's really what's standing between that's that's really um what's between us I've known that for a long time but like I would allow that I think that is it's that is the right thing to do for myself so how did I integrate that? I got to the point where I understood why I needed to believe that. Um, is because I needed approval. I needed to experience approval. I needed approval. I needed to be right. Uh, so there's a lot of things that I needed, and all these need is really um, keeping me in that in that relate that that kind of circling and circling relationship. <clears throat> so when I got to the point where I understand that, okay. I I don't need other people to agree with me that just I need to agree with me. I need to accept myself. I need to back myself. Once I know that, that's all I need to do. I don't need that from anyone else. I just need me to accept me. That was what did it for me. So what does it take for you to integrate your, the part of you that you have, um, that is disconnected? I don't know. You have to really observe that yourself until you, you have to observe it, observe it until you get it. Um, and there is no shortcut. Does that explain anything, Adina? Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm thinking how to <laughs> integrate. Uh, maybe it's a false belief, or how how to see. But yeah, you said it's a long process. Um, my relationship for example with the with the government yeah even if it's not direct relationship but still affects me yeah so how would i because i see what that's where i am i just see what's going on 
and I don't agree. Yeah? So how do I integrate this? I have to agree that I see, I mean, I have to be aware that I see things and then move on, leave them there. So, okay. I'm glad you bring up that. <clears throat> um, so it is, okay, great. So there's something called codependence. Do you know what that is? Codependency? Yeah. yeah. So it's very human. Whatever it is that I believe in, I want other people to believe in as well. I want other people to have similar beliefs, if not exactly the same. So, and when other people believe in what it is that I believe, I feel validated. I feel safe. So, so all of that. That is in the third dimension. That is um, 3D thinking. That we think yeah. that we, we, co we are codependent. I cannot exist without other people validating my existence. That's not fifth dimension. Fifth dimension is I exist. I am. I am who I am. I may not be perfect, but I am. And as long as I am, I don't need anyone else to validate me. And in third dimension, we do need, um, we do agree that it's a co-created reality. In fifth dimension, it's no longer a co-created reality. I am fully in charge of my own reality. And when I am, and I am, absolutely integrated and coherent with what it is that I want to experience. I would shift myself to the reality, the parallel reality that agrees with what I am coherent with. That's the difference. Uh -huh. yeah. We think that, okay, I believe this. So the government has to support me and other people have to support me in order for me to have that experience. That does not hold water anymore. In the fifth dimension, in the fifth dimension, I believe in what I believe in. Other people don't believe in it. And that's okay. I will shift myself into the reality that is going to support my reality. You understand that difference? Yeah. We are no longer codependent. Mm. We create our own reality. And we don't need to, um, <clears throat> we don't need other people's approval. We just, it's not, I'm not saying that we can do whatever we want. No, you still have to be authentic. Um, you still have to check in with yourself. Is this the reality that I really want? Um, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm sort of seeing something a little bit parallel, but maybe different. Okay. But at the moment, that's where I'm at, like, I'm working more at at caring more for myself and loving myself. And by doing that, then it I can see clearer times when people are are crossing my boundaries or not are disrespecting me more often. And now i'm I'm not I'm not allowing that to happen. And because i'm I'm you know i'm I'm doing the things of 
complimenting myself and and assuring myself and talking to myself as a friend and those kind of things that support myself so that other I, I accept others and want to integrate with others but not if they're going to disrespect me or cross my boundaries well if they cross my boundaries I have to hold my boundary but you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah but it comes from self-love I can understand that concept a little bit better I think you're saying similar things I think you know but I just see this one a little bit clearer for me <laughs> or it's just where I'm at now okay great so you are uh, okay I just want to to mention that there is no one right way to get there this is what works for you so absolutely it's perfect for you yeah yeah and you know it's it's undoing a lot of these patterns and things that we've been taught right uh -huh. trying to see them as they come up yeah <laughs> yeah there there is no one right way to go from where we are in 3d to where we want to be in fifth dimension each one of us we will we will have to find our own way to go there to get there it may take us a short time it may take us many lifetimes but it's okay we um the thing is we all moving towards that direction at our own pace and that's the most important thing so right now the reason why um renegotiating our contracts or our own experience is not easy is because we have so much um misunderstanding of what of who we are what we are actually capable of and and also one thing is the we have a paradigm shift everything is completely changed and we're still living in the old paradigm but actually <laughs> the old paradigm is no longer supported we are now in actually we're all finding our own way to move to get out of the old paradigm, to move into the new paradigm. So no one rate, uh, no one way to get there. We each have to find our own way. That's why um, when you ask me what integration is, there's no one way to integrate. We each person will have to find our own way to integrate ourselves when i say integrate i'm what i'm trying to say is um to get completely congruent to make sure that no part of you are still needing that experience and to not um think that the part of you that that still wanted to be the victim or the part of you that still needed approval bad bad girl like don't do that because Every time you have a judgment, anytime then you you are not you haven't integrated. When you get to the point where you no longer judge the experience, that also means that you no longer judge that part of you that needed the the experience. And that truly is what integration is. So so would it be that if you've gotten to that stage um, magically, <laughs> that <laughs> you would you would be at neutral and you would have no judgment and you would just be an observer, watch, watching what's going on without any sort of reaction or. I don't know. It seems kind of boring to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, 
Okay, so let me put it this way. We, right now we have, let's say this goal that we want to get to, um, let's say being the victimhood or have holding our own boundaries. That's That's kind of our goal. Once we get there though, the next goal will show up. Right. Okay. Right. Infinite. We we are actually not. We're not just stopping at fifth dimension. We're going all the way. There's so many other dimensions, and we're going all the way. So we are now going from the third to the fifth. But the fifth is just a stepping stone to the sixth, the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. So there is okay. no end to the goals, the level of goals that we can get to. So right now, just just um, <clears throat> put one, like do, do the integration, whatever integration that you feel is going to take you to the next step. Just do that and know that when you get there, the next level, Will, will show up right okay it's never ending right so yeah. so yeah don't don't need to worry that when when you get there it's like i'm buddha nothing can, can shift me anymore like even buddha <laughs> has, to, has still has a lot of things to learn so <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think one of the patterns in my life was uh, that many unfair things were coming to my life or to me or kind of hitting me, but it's because I like to fight. So I think that was just to, to, to provoke me and to have a reason to master my fights. You, uh, you like to fight. That's why you keep creating. Yeah, I like to fight fights. unfairness. I, I did. I wasn't clear. Like if something is not fair, I kind of immediately, automatically, subconsciously step into fight. <laughs> for me or for others. Okay. That's that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> Until you get to the point where you, you're done. Like, actually, I'm going to complete my story today. Something came back. Like on Tuesday, it was agreement. Everything is fine. Done. Go. No problem. And then today, there is an answer. Sorry, we can't accept this. And it's like big consequences. And I've been working with someone else. And then he phones me and said, look, we have bad news. This is what happened. And I said, no, that cannot happen. Like, I absolutely don't take that as an answer, even though it's, you know, that kind of authority that you can't really fight. There is no appeal. There is, like, this is final. And within a couple hours, we got the positive result differently different route, different road, but because I was so determined that that absolutely cannot be accepted from me. And the other guy, he accepted, he said, we have no chance to, you know, to go further. So this is the stop for the process. So maybe I hope I mastered my, <laughs> I renegotiated my contract. So thanks, Vinny. Maybe you helped ahead of the time. <laughs> okay. You know what? As long as you are enjoying the journey, then carry on. <laughs> yeah, you uh, like renegotiate if you're no longer enjoying the journey. But if you are enjoying the journey, if there's still something in it for you, if there's still that hook, then carry on. So that is um, the, the journey or the contract? Both. 
Okay. Yeah. As long as there's something in that contract that like is still somehow meaningful to you. And then carry on. Yeah. Okay. Until we get to the point where you look at it, it's like it's pointless. Until you get to that point, it's like, okay, I'm done. Like when you're done, then renegotiating is just it's simple. It's, or, and easy as well. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um anything that I missed? Um okay. So I think I kind of the so um so how do we create consciously? I actually want to talk about that. How do we consciously create? How do we be the creator? So we if we actually get to the point where we want to be the conscious creator of our lives rather than be <clears throat> being pulled by our unconscious contracts is to embrace being authentic. So it means that um, you have to ex examine each of your beliefs, morals, ethics, and really make sure that it's you, that it resonates with you in that. <clears throat> so let me give an example. Um, the Chinese is that you have to listen to authority. You have to listen to your parents, listen to teachers, listen to anybody else who has authority over you. So that is uh, Chinese ethics and um there is the whole background of confucianism is that everyone has their own um confucianism is that everyone has their own domain their own things that is theirs to to kind of keep holding on to so so all that background, so that's a lot of the, the, the Chinese ethics. So do I resonate with that? No, <laughs> I don't. And, and so <clears throat> it's about how I in really look at, okay, so listen, so, so when I, look at that I don't resonate with that and I have to um just accept where I am with that does it mean that I have to um fight with authority no I don't I don't have to fight authority because um it's not about fighting it's really about knowing what it is that is authentic for you it's it's either something that you really resonate with and agree with or you don't no need to fight someone else may actually have a completely different perspective they really like respect old people and all of that i just don't and i don't need to for someone else to agree with me so get to the point where you are really authentic. Now, does it mean that, you know, I'm right or I'm wrong? No, I'm, it's not about me being right or me being wrong. It's this is my relationship with the idea. I don't resonate with that idea. So I just have to be authentic and really live my life that way so that's really being authentic 
um, being authentic is is really everything in your life. It has to be yours. You cannot say, "Oh, my mother believes it, so I am going to also believe it as well." And that does not work because you are just so a part of you would always be fighting against it may not be all of you fighting against it however if you make something your own you absolutely congruent with it then all of you is for it there's no fighting so that is what i mean by authentic is um everything make sure that everything you believe in is something that you wholeheartedly believe in and no part of you is fighting against it um, unconsciously. So that also means that you have to be very aware of your own thought patterns. That's when you can notice whether you are agreeing wholeheartedly or you're just um, doing it because someone else think that is a good idea so so that's part of being a conscious creator is you have to notice um any part of you that is not towing it's not aligned when you can be fully aligned then then um, you are going to be a more powerful creator. Um, so you need to be authentic. Um, what else? Okay, sorry. I have to refer to my notes now. Okay, conscious creator. Okay. Authentic. Ah, okay, great. Got it. Authentic. Yes. Um, I already talked about sovereignty. Sovereignty is that you know that you are the creator of your own reality. You don't, you're not, um, you don't need other people. Your reality is not dependent on someone else's reality. And the other thing is, um, you also need to um, have some, you have to have hope and faith. So hope and faith is when you are completely authentic, when you absolutely are aligned with what you believe in and you understand and also integrated all the parts of you that are not aligned, then know that the universe is going to support you in everything that you want to create you may not be able to create something instantaneously yet however whenever the, the um whenever whenever it is time for whatever reality that you want to experience it is going to show up and we, as a human being, we like to say, okay, I want to take a go and I want it to be March, let's say 2023. And our ego mind thinks that, okay, it has to be done by March 2023. Otherwise, it's a failure or otherwise the universe does not support me, blah, blah, blah. We have, we have these things. The universe does not go by your timeline. Because the universe is always there to support you. However, in order to support you to have exactly the experience that you want, it may take until April, it may take until May, or it may take until 2024. So, um, just, and so that's when the, the hope and the faith has, comes in as well. So when you have all that together, then you know that you can actually start to consciously create your own experience. 
And when you have come to an experience that you don't like, then <clears throat> all you need to do is integrate the part of you that needed to have the experience that you don't prefer. And, and then that experience will drop off and you are free to go. So you do step by step. You don't know when it's going to be finished, but you just take another step, take another step. And hope and faith know, absolutely know that when the timing is right, then everything will come together for you to have that experience. Okay, any um, questions, comments? All good. You now, you guys know how to be a conscious creator now. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us. <clears throat> Wonderful. I'm confused. <laughs> okay. What are you confused about? So. how to release the contract. So I have to find out why why it's bothered me, why this relationship bothered me and I have to integrate it, right? To accept it. I have to understand why this relationship bothered me. So I have to find it in myself, why did I need it? and then accept it, or what? Can you give me um, an example relationship that you want to work on or renegotiate? Uh, for right now, I want to um, negotiate the relationship with my daughter. And um, she doesn't was, want to hear, um, she actually want to be my mom. She want to dictate me what to say, how to act. Otherwise, she doesn't want to listen what I have to say. You know, what's the funny part of that is that your daughter is actually doing exactly the same. She is trying to renegotiate. And while you are wanting to renegotiate with her, and she is doing her part in trying to renegotiate with you. Do you understand that? So she wants the, your relationship, like her relationship with you to be a certain way. And she's telling you, this is what I want, mom. And you, on the other hand, wanted to renegotiate and say, this is what I want. So you both renegotiating. What to do then? Okay. So be who you are. She doesn't accept who I am. That's okay. Do not need her to accept you. Do you accept yourself? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Do you accept yourself as who you are? Yes, I am. Okay, great. If you accept who you are, then you don't need her to accept you. Just be who you are without needing to change her to be just accept her as who she is as well. Because she is just another aspect of you. So you accept who you are. You be who you are around her without needing her to agree with you or accept you. 
Just just do not pay attention whatever she's doing, right? Um, Tatiana, give her the example of what happened. Uh, for example, so she making video calls. She doesn't let us me to see um, my granddaughter until six months, until the girl gonna be six months old. So, and um, for example, today, girl grab her eyeglasses and you know trying to take it in her mouth i said be careful she can break it and uh, uh, she can uh, hurt herself and she just hang up on me mm -hmm. okay There was a previous one too. What? The previous one? When you said something and she said, don't tell. Yeah, and if I say something, she's saying like, don't don't say that. Don't call that. You know, she just want me to say only what she want to hear. Okay. So... Otherwise, she doesn't want to listen. She hang up the phone. How does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. How does that make How does that make you feel? I mean, a little bit upset, but I already get used to it, so I didn't call back to her. Mm -hmm. Um. So what you need to, what I would suggest you to integrate is that you want it, a part of you resists this relationship, that this new relationship. Yes. You wanted the relationship to be the old relationship. I mean, uh, if it makes sense um, why why she want me to 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 say only what one she want to hear that is where she's at right now that's so it mean i cannot tell my truth i cannot tell what i think you can tell what you you can tell your truth yes and she will react the way she react. Are you okay with that? I mean, little by little, she she make me to be okay with that. Like, I get used to it. I mean, it's still upsetting me, but what can I do? So can you observe why, why are you upset? Why are you upset? Because I don't want anyone to dictate me what to say. Okay. Isn't that your own interpretation of what she's doing? She doesn't know what you're going to say. So how can you say what she doesn't want you to say? No, when I, when I say so until, something... Until it is spoken, nobody knows what is going to happen. You don't yeah. know how she will take it and she won't know how, what you're going to say. So it's not that way. You are taking it like that. You are you are interpreting the whole scenario like that. No, so but I, I interpret it right? after it's happened. Yes. I yes, don't exactly. do it. And... So it will keep yeah. happening. It will keep happening if you don't find a way to accept that. Except what? Because you cannot change her. You can only change yourself. So what Vinny is teaching us is that we got to accept that or in the next time that you interact, you think what you want to happen in your mind and see if that will work out. 
you have to change. You have to make that decision. I am going to have a pleasant visit this time and no uncomfortable for either of us. You have to make that decision. Right, Rini? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, okay. So you yeah. have to get to the point where you are so comfortable with who you are that no matter what her reaction is, it does not influence how you are with yourself. So I have to say my experience today, Tatiana, because it was like this. So the other person who delivers that bad news about the work, and he's just so calm. So we said, there's nothing we can do. And I scream at him and I say, you are a loser. You have no idea what you're doing. That's why they are doing this to us. And I hang up. So he calls back. I hang up. And then he says, please, like fifth time, please don't hang up on me. If you are like, I'm, I was brought up like this. If you are from polite family, you don't hang up on people. So I said, I'm not from as good family like you. So I have a right to hang up. And, and he said, and then you say, have to say goodbye. I said, so goodbye. I have right to do that because I'm not from such a fancy family like you. So we let it be for for hour. So then, uh, you know, the, the whole thing was calm and we couldn't talk the hour after, later. Just normally, like nothing happened. So maybe sometimes you just have to give the time, you know, like let it be. You know, was, I don't know. This was so weird today. Like I think that I was kept hanging up on him time after time after time. But he stayed calm. Like he stayed calm. So one has to stay calm. So uh, that's what actually happened. So when she hang up, I never called back. So next day she called to my, my sister and myself again, like nothing happened. So I already know. I do not call. I do not uh, take ask for explanation i don't want to prove anything so i think you just have to forget that that happened just don't pay any attention to it yeah. just like nothing happened like hour later we talked like nothing happened in between <laughs> and we were so so good we finished up on a friendly note and but I don't remember ever in my life that I was doing this to someone. Like the way I screamed at him, I kept hanging up. Uh, I don't think I've ever done it before. <laughs> but see, in my relationship with my daughter, um, even though she called next day, but it's repeating in in a, in a different situations. Uh, I think. Vini, right? She she trying to negotiate with me, but I, I do not understand what to do. So the, I would suggest that you just be yourself, and also so be yourself, accept yourself, and also accept that she has every right to be herself. She has every right to cut you off. She has every right to, it's, yeah, it's her baby. She has every right to not let you or anybody else see the baby until after six months or even up to a year or even a couple of years. It's, it's really her choice. There's, there's nothing you can do because you can't change her. Um, and to get to the point where you are so sure of yourself that you don't need a certain relationship with her, that you allow her to be who she is. 
and also have the hope and faith that when the timing is right, so one day her daughter is going to grow up and they're going to have similar relationship because it is set up like that. It is set up like that. That's that's when we really learn the consequences of our own choice. So used to be a pattern, but we are trying to break that now. Roxana, can you speak louder, please? What I was trying to tell Minnie is isn't that a pattern that we are trying to break? That's the old yes. pattern that we used mm. to do, what we did with our parents. And then when we become parents, we do it with our children. Yeah, we do it by letting go. Yeah, but now we to, have, now we realize it's different. Yeah, we have to change. Getting to, getting to neutral. Yeah. And really accepting yourself 100% and accepting her, which wherever she's at 100% as well. Okay. And, and know that in her own time, she will come around. But in the meantime, this is what the relationship is at. But we can also, like you just uh, explained about uh, the whole class, that you can make your things happen like yeah you're creating that so you're part of that creation and that scenario too yeah yes because something in your subconscious is reacting that way or expecting that reaction also mm -hmm. you're expecting that reaction so that's what i feel like when we are expecting that it's going to happen that way so if we in our full heart say no this is never going to happen like what Draga just said, that she screamed that it cannot be done. And it did not happen. They changed their mind. So it's the same thing. When you decide this isn't how you want it, like you decide when you want the bus to come. And it comes. <laughs> so these little, little things we have to practice, I'm saying, that makes yeah. us yeah. get to the so point. Actually... As I understood, I have to create, before I start to talk, I have to create um, positive outcome, right? Yeah. yeah. Just just think. If nothing. And accept your the way. Neither of us is going to be upset. That's it. We are going to be calm and have a good visit. That's all. And mm -hmm. I enjoy seeing my granddaughter. That is the main reason why I'm there. You take the good part of it. The ne don't stress on the negative. Look at the good part. You are getting time. You're getting to see your grandchild. I don't even get to do that. Once in a way, <laughs> once in a two way, she will let me do that. And then she decides when she wants to make the call and she decides when she'll hang up. So we are, I have no control, but I enjoy that little time. That's all I look at. I don't care about the other thing. You have to mm -hmm. accept that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. No matter, no matter what shows up, um, accept yourself. Because one of the, the thing is she does not accept you. So what is that reflecting? Are you accepting yourself? In this relationship, are you accepting yourself? And are you accepting her? See, I didn't accept her the way she was. I okay, have to accept they her. It, yeah. They can pick it up on your subconscious. They can pick it yeah, up. It's, it's energy. Energy um, does not lie. You may not be consciously aware of it, but she um, on an unconscious level is going to pick it up and she is going to react however it is that she would react to that kind of energy 
Mm-mm. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Vini. Thank you, Roxana. You're welcome. Here. <laughs> okay. So, you guys ready for your meditation? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> 